Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's presentation, Scale Power and Memory for Your Relational Database, brought to you by Tool. Before we get started, I'd like to take care of a couple housekeeping items. First off, I'd like to make sure you all can hear me okay. So if you would, post a message in the chat window to let me know. Great. If you have any questions for our presenters today, please post those into the questions panel so we can get to them after the presentation. If you experience any technical, technical difficulties, like the audio dropping out or the screen sharing not displaying properly, please post a message in the chat panel to me, the host, and I'll work with you to resolve those issues. Lastly, on the housekeeping list, we are recording today's presentation and will be making it available shortly after today's event concludes. Now that we're through the housekeeping items, I'd like to introduce you to our presenters. Dennis Anakin, he has been working as an engineering director, CTO, and CEO for over a decade with prior experience as a software, a senior software engineer. He's focused on performance in every sense of the word, the best team, products, and optim optimizations to make the impossible possible. Before joining Terran Tool, he was the CEO of email and cloud services at mail.ru, which is the fifth biggest email service in the world. Now Dennis focuses on applying his experience to consult and help clients and to manage overall strategy for enterprise deployments. Now, Dennis, if you would say hello, and audience, please let me know if you can hear Dennis by posting a message in the chat window. Hello. Great. Our next presenter is Evan Bates. He is a technical writer and web developer based in Detroit. He has humanities, uh, humanities undergraduate degree and in addition to the Terran Tool ecosystem, he enjoys programming in Gulang and the mean stack. Evan, if you would say hello and audience, please let me know if you can hear him in the chat window. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Or afternoon or evening, <laughs> depending on where you are. <laughs> Great. Our last presenter is Tyler Norkis. Tyler has 10 years of experience, enterprise experience, Span mul multinational deployments of artificial intelligence, big data, analytics, and marketing solutions. Tyler graduated summa cum laude from DePaul University in Chicago and received from the University of Lewisburg an MBA in honors, with honors. When he is not working, he is watching HBO, hiking, and exploring Spicy foods. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. Awesome. And chat, if you hear him, let me know in the chat panel. Great. And with that, I'm going to turn things over to our presenters to start the presentation. All right. Well, thanks so much for the introductions. Um, so really quickly, uh, for everybody on the call, um, I'll, I'll do a brief recap of what we're going to cover today. So we're looking at how you can use powerful open source in-memory technology so you can scale your applications and microservices uh, while still using your relational databases that, that you are today. So we're going to cover how you can use in-memory technology, uh, particularly uh, Tarantool, which we've developed, um, show some examples of how people have applied it, and we're going to save a lot of time at the end for questions. So anything that you see going through this or kind of how you could apply it um, to, to your projects, to, to your situation, we, we'd love to talk with you about that. Um, so to kick this off, I'd like to do a quick poll, just kind of see what, uh, what the experience levels of, of folks are. Um, so the poll question is, um, are you familiar with in-memory data stores? Have, have you used them? So for example, maybe a Redis, something like this. So we'd love to hear if, if, if you've tried something like this before, or kind of if, if you've tried to develop something something within memory.
So feel free to feel free to vote and we'd love to see the results. I'm going to leave the poll open for a few more seconds for those last minute entries. And here are the results. Okay, about evenly split. Perfect. Can can folks still hear me? Yes, they should be able to. Okay, great. Um, so it seems like we we we're about evenly split. About half of folks have have tried something before, and and half of folks haven't. Um, so what what we're going to talk about today is is kind of a, a high level, um, and then some specifics. So if if you don't have any experience within memory, uh, that this will help. And if, if you do, uh, we're, we're going to go into some detail. So I'm going to turn this over to Evan for a quick background on, on what is Tarantool, who are we, how, how, did we, how did we get here? OK, hi, everyone. Um, so basically, Tarantool started in 2008 as an in-house solution at Mail.ru, which is one of the world's largest internet companies. It's fifth in the world if you count by number of page views. Um, basically, we were using relational databases, and we basically needed to find a way to scale to our current 150 active million users. Perhaps you're in a similar situation. Um, in any case, in Trentol's early phases, the MySQL core engineer was hired as a team lead, and gradually the project began to really take off. Um, Trentol took over more and more of the work at Mail.ru, and it's now used in over half of its applications, primarily for authentication, push notifications, and advertising. Um, advertising is the heaviest usage. It runs the largest Trentol cluster in the world, handling 3 million read transactions and 1 million write transactions per second. But Trentol isn't only at Mail.ru, it's in telecoms, banks, as well as e-commerce, media, and security companies around the world, and also in smaller applications like web apps, you know, and even personal web apps. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Evan. Um, so sort of how, how it's relevant for, for you all. Um, our, our architecture at Mail.ru is probably similar to yours. So we have different products, we have different teams, and each of those teams has the flexibility to choose their own tools. So we had a variety of relational databases, um, different kinds of know-how and knowledge, and um, we really needed to be able to pull this together. So we realized that our architecture was a limiting factor on innovation. Uh, we wanted to be able to serve data faster. We wanted to be able to make more real-time decisions to be able to look at data across these systems. And we wanted to reduce, uh, we wanted to be able to scale the number of requests and stop overloading our application servers. And so this is where we ran into um, sort of a, a problem that, that you've probably seen. Um, your relational databases on the left, MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, uh, these are very reliable, but they're slow and, and they're, they don't scale uh, very well. Um, on, on the other side, you have faster solutions where you sacrifice reliability, acid transactions, and some of the features uh, that, that you really have come to know and love in a relational database. Um, so we built Tarantool uh, to really help kind of connect this problem. So what Tarantool can do is interface with a variety of different databases uh, that you have today. It can pull this different data together as needed um, and then be able to serve that. So I'll, I'll walk through this really quickly. Um, on the right side, you have the solutions you have today, um, Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, or, or MySQL, anything like this. Um, what Tarantool can do is connect with these systems, import some of this data, uh, export some data back into these systems, and really be kind of a high-speed bridge, a hub, uh, a, a real aggregate. Um, and within Tarantool, you can now script logics, you have primary and secondary indexes, and you have ACID transactions in memory and in disk. So what Tarantool can do is sit on top of these systems and, and really add massive power without adding more clusters and machines uh, to, your, to your relational databases. Uh, so, so Tarantool is an application server 
it's an in-memory database and it's a cache all in one. So in one system, you have the ability to script, you have the ability to connect, and you have the ability to serve. And so if you go to the left side, what this means is that now you have a single point of control to be able to power um, your application, services, APIs. Uh, this can also fit very well into a data warehouse that we have that allows uh, powerful analytics and BI or things like real-time monitoring and detection. So for example, Evan mentioned our, our advertising system uses this real-time uh, because we have to make a bid in milliseconds. Um, this is also true for use cases like anti-spam or fraud detection or, or other types of things that need to be real-time. So whether you are um, are are performing millions of read requests and, and you need to be able to take your relational data and deliver it many, many times without that load, or you want to do something very quickly with your data uh, very often, um, Tarantool can really help with that. So it's designed to fit into a variety of ecosystems and really offer, offer some control. Uh, so let, let's go to let's go to one more poll. Um, we're we're really interested in kind of uh, have, have any of you found or or sort of exploring solutions around latency and performance for relational databases. So for example, if you use MySQL, Postgres, SQL Server, have you been exploring uh, performance issues related to speed or or sort of scale capabilities? We'd love to hear kind of if this is on your mind. I'll give it a few more seconds for those last minute responses. And there are the results. Okay. So some of you have explored it, many of you haven't. Uh, what we typically find with folks that have not uh, sort of run into this issue is that they're adding more and more clusters, more machines, more instances of the relational system. So for example, in order to get more performance from Oracle, you can buy a bigger mainframe or, or more licenses, more, more even an open source solution like MySQL, you can add a lot of machines. While this may not translate into license cost, it does translate into hardware costs. So I, I would imagine that a lot of you are managing performance kind of by, by scaling up, up your system. So I, I want to turn this back to Evan a little bit for kind of how, how this can work differently than adding more machines to your, to your relational cluster. Do you want to talk through some um, of the performance? Yeah, sure. Um, so the basic takeaway is that Tarantals far more efficient per core than a relational database. So basically you transfer work from your relational database to Tarantool and you can downsize the expensive enterprise um, hardware you had been using. Um, so Tarantool can execute around a million queries a second on a single core. Um, the fastest uh, million query per second test we could find on the internet for a relational database was the MariaDB server, which required 20 cores to achieve a million queries per second. So you can get a sense of uh, how many fewer machines you can use with Tarantul. And uh, so it allows you to use your hardware dollars more efficiently, um, basically. Um, I can talk about the internals a little bit, Tyler. I don't know um, if we want to go into that now or... Just a little bit, sure. Let's give a little okay. taste. Um, you know, it's a little deep technically, but most people find it interesting. Um, Tarantul is based on the actor model, so it features coroutines. Uh, that run concurrently within a single operating system thread, uh, which are called fibers. Um, they use preemptive multitasking, um, which means that a fiber voluntarily yields control to another fiber when it's blocked or idle. Um, and they run on an operating system thread that's dedicated transactions, but Tarantul uses two other operating system threads, one for network I.O. and one for the write-ahead log, um, 
but each tarantal instance usually runs on a single core because um, the network and the write ahead log threads are continuously active. So they alternate in and out. Um, in any case, okay, I'll. So what, one, one question here, I think we covered sort of the ACID transactions, the million uh, transactions per second. How, how is it different than let's say a Redis? Because about half of folks here have tried maybe something like Redis or, or Memcached. Yeah, um, so a lot of people consider switching over because it's open source like Redis. Um, it, probably the first thing that uh, everyone likes about Tarantula is that it has secondary ex indexes, which uh, Redis doesn't. Um, it can also work with data sets larger than RAM um, with uh, its new vinyl engine. Um, we're going to be putting out an article pretty soon, really getting deep into the internals of vinyl. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a nice invention. Um, it also has a full application server um, with access to network and external services, whereas Redis only has Lua stored procedures and their blocking. OK. So we talked through some of the benefits. Uh, let's turn this to Dennis, who has been working with some some different customers on applications. So we can go through a few examples and then open this up to questions and maybe come back to different aspects uh, of how it works technically or, or how you could apply it. Um, let, let's give some, some real world applications who uses this and, and how. Uh, so this is our, our uh, general manager, Dennis Anakin. Hey, 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 guys. So um, I have a couple of use cases of Toronto. Um, uh, so actually, uh, Toronto is um, uh, like it's uh, it's pretty popular in in, in telcos and, and in banks. So I mean, in, in finance uh, organizations. So so one of the biggest example maybe it's it's uh, Mastercard. So Mastercard uh, is 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 using Toronto um, as a uh, as a core database for their peer peer to peer payment system. So so what is a peer to peer payment system? Uh, imagine that um, that you want to transfer money to someone. So you open your mobile banking app, then you enter first and last name of a user you want to transfer money to. Uh, then choose among all the people uh, with the same full name uh, the the right user based on the picture, and then you tap the the button and and the money is, is transferred. Uh, if if the recipient um, uh, has already linked the uh, debit or credit card to a social network, then they will immediately receive the money. Otherwise, the the recipient will be shown the um, the money transferred and asked to attach a debit or credit card to a social network. So so once the card is attached the money will arrive to that card immediately. So if, um, if, if you don't know the, the recipient full name or the recipient is not on the social media, then you can transfer money by, by a phone number. Uh, once again, you, you open a mobile banking app, specify the recipient phone number, tap the button and money is transferred. So the recipient um, will get a text message with a link to the MasterCard portal where they will link uh, the credit or debit card to the phone number and then immediately get the money in, in the debit or credit card account. So under under the hood, actually, this this system that was introduced in, in, in MasterCard. So so right now it, it, it works only only in Europe. Uh, so this this system uh, links mobile banking apps, social networks, mobile phones, and MasterCard P2P payment portal. So the system sees thousands of transactions per, per second because a lot of customers want to, you know, to transfer uh, money between each other. Uh, so, so the system needs a very fast database, which is, which is Toronto. So actually Toronto is the core of the system. They, they use it as a database and as an application server all in one, like uh, Evan told you uh, a, a couple minutes ago that Toronto, um, it's not just a database. It's not just just a cache like Redis or like Memcached. It's it's more. It's it's cache database and application servers. So you can, for example, you, you can write uh, 
stored procedures right inside Toronto. So it's pretty much like stored procedures to any other database. But but the main difference is that the, the, the Toronto is very fast. It's fast like cache. So you can write, uh, you know, very complex application logic right inside Toronto, and and it doesn't slow it down. So I mean, it it still works fast, even even having even even having like like a lot of this logic in it. Uh, also, the other interesting thing that uh, we so so the team of Toronto they uh, they 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 actually implemented the the whole system for Mastercard. And again, it, it was totally implemented with Toronto, just on, on stored procedures inside the database. So they didn't need any, you know, any other application server or any cache or, or, or anything else. Just one system and it's enough to implement the really, you know, like, like a system that, face, that faces real, really heavy work, workloads. Uh, so, so, so this was Mastercard. Uh, Great. The other use case, so the other use case is Wimpelcom. So Wimpelcom is uh, is one of the biggest European telecoms. They they have more than two two hundred million customers. So Wimpelcom is using Toronto as a cache for their billing system. So so you know that every every telecom has billing system. Uh, it's a system that uh, you know that uh, calculates like how how much you have to pay for for your call. Like like when you call somebody that that it needs to understand like how how much does it cost. Or for example, if you use three three G internet traffic, so the same thing. So they need to estimate the amount of money that 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 they will charge you. So uh, we with Wimpelcom, uh, they use Toronto as a cache for balances and profiles. So profiles and balances of, of all the customers um, are stored into into Toronto. And again, this this helps them significantly to so first of all to reduce workloads on their core billing system based on Oracle and other old databases. So actually, in the in the poll, I saw that 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 more than eighty percent of of attendees, right? So so eighty percent of, of of you guys uh, are facing the problem when when your main database is slowing down and and uh, and, and and this is bad. So actually, this problem is very common. This 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 problem, uh, um, you know, uh, telcos and banks they they face the same problem as as well as as Wimpelcom. So they they put Toronto as a huge cache on top of all of the old systems. And again, so like Tyler showed you that Toronto can you know can interface with other databases like with Oracle, with uh, Microsoft SQL and other and uh, other ones. So you just can put it on top of that, and it will work for you. Uh, so it it will have all the information that you have in those databases, and uh, it will continuously uh, kind of um, replicate all the changes from those old 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 databases. So uh, uh, that so so that was so, so that was Wimpelcom, and uh, if I have time, I can I can show one one more. Uh, Use case. This is uh, Sberbank. Actually, this use case it's it's not in production yet. It's uh, it's in progress. But with Sberbank, so uh, so Sberbank, it's again it's one of the largest banks in in Europe in Eastern Europe. They have more than two, like more than three hundred million customers. And uh, uh, so so what they do? They 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 built a single sign-on system based on Toronto. A single sign-on sign -on system is an is an authentication or authorization system that they need to authenticate all the users in mobile apps in in web interfaces to you know to uh, like when they when they use the banking products and uh, so uh, and and again it's very similar to Mastercard actually they they built the whole system uh, on Toronto so they again they. They, they they don't need application service like they, they they don't need Java or C sharp they just write all the logic in it it's again it's pretty it's it's very similar to to what some uh, you know to what to what happened to Oracle maybe like 30 years ago or 20, 20 years ago when when people started to use Oracle as an application server 
and uh, they wrote like like a lot of storage storage partitions in Oracle. But again, the the main difference is in performance. It's like now nowadays uh, uh, we face workloads like thousands, maybe million times more than than it used to be like 30 years ago. And so that's why like this is a a new tool for new workloads, but with the same paradigm like that you again. You just can code like everything in, in, in one place as a storage procedure, and it just works because it's fast. So you don't need to, like, for example, you, you, you don't need to think about, oh, what happens if my database instance, uh, you know, gets overloaded? Like, what would I do then? But, but even actually, even if it gets overloaded, so Toronto is a, is a cluster database, so it can, it, can, it can be deployed in a cluster of machines. Like, it, it scales horizontally. So, I mean, if, if, you, if you face, I mean, if your workload goes, you know, way too high, then you just add like one or two machines and, and, and you are done. Just you, you don't need to kind of to, to change your code, to change your application logic to, you don't need to think, okay, so this, um, so, 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 so for example, this table of a database uh, has a lot of queries. So I just need to move this table to some other instance. So you don't need to think about this. Actually, that is what you do with MySQL, with Postgres. You just, you you kind of, you kind of separate your, I mean, you divide your database into different pieces and move it to, into different machines with different, into different nodes, just because um, one node or one machine doesn't stand the workload. We certainly don't have to do this. You just can have everything in a, in a cluster, in a single in a single cluster. So okay, guys. So 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 there were use cases. Thanks, Dennis. That that's a good point. So let's say, for example, um, in the case of a Vimplecom or Mastercard, you have some type of financial system, a billing system, an ordering system. Um, you you want your operational database, uh, your 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 system of record to be very reliable. And it's probably an older relational system. So, for example, um, if you keep your customer orders in, in Oracle, um, every time now you offer a mobile service or you have a new web app or something where you scale the number of users, uh, this underlying Oracle system may be a great database for your customers and how much they, they, they owe. But what it doesn't do very well is now support millions of calls. So every time one of your customers sends a text message or accesses the internet, there's small charges. These are kept open. And, and once you're, you're done with the communication, that charge has to be persisted and, and moved back into the system of record. So this Oracle system that was primarily sort of a reporting system or a system of record is now having to support a widespread ap application calls, a lot of transactions. And then within that, there's a lot of things that you may want to know in real time. Um, so this, this Oracle system just became massively loaded. Um, this is a difficult thing because you need new hardware, license. Um, and th this is true of, of all of your relational databases while while it's a good end system it's not necessarily the best way to serve that data um, or, or for example here here would be like this customer use case or authentication um, so you have a, a a relational database that has all of your customers and their id number and you have another table that's their balance and you have another table that is their type of membership or subscription. So every time you do an authentication or every time you make a billing charge, you have to now go look up from multiple tables, multiple relational tables. So not only do you have the scale of this new application growing and growing, but you have increasing complexity. One request becomes three or four queries. So what, what Tarantul can do is actually unify that data. Um, this is why the stored procedures are so useful. You can create an aggregate, you can create a cached view, you can create 
um, the final product that you really need and have high availability read on, on that aggregate. So instead of going to three different tables every time, Tarantool can unite that and then be a single source um, to call for, for high volume. So I know we've talked for a little bit. Um, we can go in a lot more detail about some of these different things, but I wanted to open it up to the audience for some questions. So I've either about how, how Tarantool or in memory works or, or maybe something you're working on. Um, so feel free to um, feel free to ask any questions and, and we'll take them. Awesome. Our first question is, what are the best use cases of Tarantool? Good question. Uh, so I can un answer this. Uh, so, so the best use case is um, uh, is uh, actually it's a it's a it's a cache. I would say it's a cache. So, so for example, if you uh, if your current system if your current system faces uh, a lot of you know transactions per second. Workload is is way too big. Like your your CPU is 100%. Uh, I mean your CPU consumption is 100%, and uh, and everything slows slows down. Then you can you know cash out this this work this this workload into into Toronto, and uh, it will just you know it will it will it will help you. And uh, and the uh, and the main thing is that you can uh, replicate data from your main data source to Toronto. So so this means that that your cache, your Taranto, which is cache, will 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 always be uh, you know filled with data. So you, so you will never have a cache miss. Actually, that's the main problem. Like every time when I use memcached or Redis or Couchbase or whatever, you always have to have a problem with the cache miss. Like if you have a cache miss, then first uh, this 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 request uh, is processed slowly, and and second. Uh, you you don't know if you if if uh, if data in in this in 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 cache correct or not correct because when you have cache misses then this means that that something uh, like something gets evicted from the cache or for example when cache is reloaded it's it's blank it doesn't have like anything in it and you and you don't know how to fill it up so with Toronto we don't have this problem so you just you just replicate from from the main data source to Toronto continuously and like when you start Toronto like blank Toronto again then you just again first you you dump your main database upload it into Toronto then you start replication and then and and then you're good you just have the the same copy like of your of your main data source in Toronto and uses to to uh, you know to offload your system so so, yeah. so 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 the main use case is Cache is to offload your system, but but cache is a smart cache. Smart cache without cache misses. Cache that's 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 always there. That's persistent and acid. So, for example, for some of you folks, um, you probably built a session management system. You need to keep user state. Maybe you have an authentication system that needs to look up different things about users from a table or multiple tables. Maybe you have a very high high speed system, like you, you every time a transaction comes in, you want to see is this fraudulent or or does this match a whitelist or blacklist, something like this. Um, a billing system where you cannot lose your data uh, because Tarantool is an acid cache. That means each transaction is reliably persisted in the same way that you would have in your relational database, except it's in memory. So it, you don't want to lose track of, of, of a payment or a customer or, or something that has real critical value. Um, so the, these are some of the common things that that we would see. Do we, do we want to add anything else, Evan or, or Dennis, kind of common use cases? Um, yeah, I mean, authentication is huge. Um, it, for example, at mail.ru, every page request, every Ajax request um, uses Tarantul. Um, 
and so this is 50,000 queries a second uh, for login password authentication and a million queries a second for session token authentication. Um, and should also note that all this work is done by 12 Tarantula servers. Actually, actually, I can I can add two use cases just 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 to the first use case is if it's anti fraud, anti fraud system, or uh, it's the system that has to check every every request to your server, and uh, because you know every request can be fraudulent, right? Or every authentication can be fraudulent. So you need to understand if 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 it is a bad guy or a good guy, and in order to do this, you just have to track back. Uh, uh, what what this what this user was doing like I don't know one one hour ago, and uh, so 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 the meaning is that you just have to uh, uh, you just have to uh, download like a lot of information from 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 a database, then make a decision if it's a fraudulent request or not, and and this takes time. So imagine if if it's like thousands or tens of thousands of requests per second to your website or to your mobile app. And every time you just need to do this work, and of course for this scenario you need some very very fast database, right? Because you need to process this like you know at speed, like at at, at speed and at, at scale. And also you 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 need a database with an application server in it because you just need to uh, 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 perform a lot of logic, like check this, check that, compare this to that, and and and, and that kind of stuff. If it was something that is outside of a database, like for example, a Java server that does some calculations, then then it wouldn't work. So so only systems like Tarantul can can help you with with anti fraud. And and the other use case is uh, advertisement system. Uh, is that when you need to show advertisement on uh, like for example, if you're an, an advertisement chain and you, you you need to understand which kind of bl block like ad block, I mean advertisement text or banner uh, show, show to a user. Just in order to understand this, you just need to make kind of a, a real-time auction, like a, a, like a real-time bidding. So you need to understand which which, adver which kind of advertisement is the best for this place, this time, this user, um, with, with this, uh, uh, I mean, with, um, uh, from, 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 from this group, right? So, 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 so again, and in this, in this scenario, you just need to um, perform like a lot of calculations, and you you need to take a lot of data from a database. So it's very similar to to anti fraud actually. So, so the system that that is accessed uh, very frequently, so and uh, each time it's accessed, it it should it should do like a lot of work with like sub sub millisecond latency, like one or two millisecond, because because nobody wants to wait, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, essentially, we we've sort of covered um, some things that we've done. Now, you may have in your enterprise or, or your application uh, some unique applications of this. But what you want to think about is where are we getting a high volume of calls? Um, what what kinds of queries or or data requests? Uh, from our application are really driving the workload and, and are scaling much faster than other kinds of calls. If you can move this call from your relational database to Tarantool, you reduce the workload on the relational database. So other applications or other things that are running on top of that database work faster. So you get better delivery, better scalability, and your underlying system or SQL Server, Oracle, or DB2 is actually freed up to, to perform better um, as, as well. So there, there can be some different benefits here. Let's go to the next question. All right, our next question is, does Terran Tool support AWS Athena as a source system? Good question. AWS, what can you can you repeat please? Athena, AWS Athena. Uh-huh. Uh, so actually, uh, I I mean we we didn't test it with Athena, but um, I so so my guess that 
that it should that it should support it because uh, like actually for Toronto it doesn't matter where you uh, where you store your, your sources right so I mean you you can use any system any system that you like and then you can just uh, upload from that system to Toronto your for example storage storage procedures easily so I mean it it doesn't matter which which source system is to use but, but right, I so think you can use AWS, you can use Azure, right, um, you can put this on prem. Yeah, yeah, but Tyler, this is this is about source like it's so 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 AWS Athena it's 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 something like Git. Uh, or or no, it's actually it's not Git. It's it's a, it's a sim ah actually it's a serverless interactive query query service. So yeah, so I so so I guess that it should do more 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 research on on that, but 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 my current guess is that it it should support it. Yeah, and for you know there there's kind of two questions. So one would be putting together the right information to handle the application request or the real time monitoring request. So so for example, Tarantul could put together the customer ID, their previous billing history and some kind of session state and bundle that together in a request really quickly. Now, if, if you guys were looking at analytics, um, how do we really drive fast analytics across these different systems or within the hot data, real-time things that are within Turan tool? Um, if, if you look over here, uh, you could see Turan House and these BI tools. Um, so we actually have a very low cost cloud and on-prem data warehouse option. It uses standard SQL, and it's designed to integrate on top of Tarantool. So this um, this connects very easily with, with your main BI tools, and you can now query across your data sources from, let's say, Tableau or ClickView using standard SQL um, or your report builder or, or things like that, and, and Tarantool will actually pull the necessary data or, or store it um, in, in memory and disk to, to be able to support that quickly. So if, if analytics is, is a big concern, um, I recommend you, you also check out Turan House. We have a live demo. Um, you can see Turan House. Uh, you could see complex queries running on Postgres and then those same queries running through Tableau and Turan Tool. Uh, to, to the same data set and it, it's massively faster. But we see these as slightly different questions in terms of analytics versus like application serving. Um, but yeah, so sorry, um, we're, we're not like super familiar with this particular system, but we'd love to talk with you about it or kind of, um, we also have a free trial. So if, if you're interested in testing the data warehouse or you want to try open source Turan tool, um, we, we can support that, and you can actually download Tarantool on, on our website. Um, let, let's do this quickly while, while we have some time uh, before we run out, and then we'll take a couple more questions. Um, Evan, do you want to go through some of the resources? So if folks want to try something or learn more, how they can sure. do that? Yeah, sure. Um, okay. And if you so could also switch the presenter the presenter view too, you can show them the, the resources so they can come up with uh, Let's see here. Um, okay. All right, so the, the main resource is Tarantle.io. We've kind of collected everything there. Um, we have, uh, under this Learn tab, um, we have articles, we have tutorials, um, you can also click on the developers tab. Um, this is the official documentation, right? Um, we also have a lot of articles on DZone, um, which the easiest thing to do is to just search for Tarantul. Um, and then we're on social media, Stack Overflow, Quora, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, we try to be everywhere. Um, uh, then finally on GitHub, um, there's a repo called Awesome, um, not a repo, a file called Awesome Resources in the official Tarantul repo. Um, and that, that has a list of connectors. 
Um, we also keep an updated list of connectors and new releases um, that goes out in our newsletter once a month. So um, please email us, um, contact us if you'd like to be added to that. Sure. Let's um, let's also show them the products area. So we, we've okay. got two different flavors of this. Enter Enterprise is the database, um, and it's designed more for Oracle, um, SQL Server, kind of your your uh, high cost data systems. Uh, the same capabilities are available in Tarantul Community uh, for your open source databases like Postgres, MySQL. So depending on what you're using, if, if you're using um, an open source relational database, you could scroll down here just a little, Evan. Um, you, you can actually go download it right here and um, or, or if you want to talk to us, you can click this live demo button. We can walk you through kind of your project, answer any questions. Um, if, if you want to try the enterprise, so if, if you're using an Oracle or, or SAP or DB2 system or something like this, um, we, the, the, the difference would be you would need some special connectors and maybe a little bit of optimization and advice. Um, and we can do that in, in the enterprise. So we have we have different connectors available um, out of the box for free to the community, and we're always open to, to answer any questions. Uh, let, let's take what let's take a couple more. We still have maybe 10 minutes. So um, I know probably some of you guys are haven't had a chance to to get your questions answered. Um, we'll try to get through as many of them as we can, and then feel free to write to us. Use the live demo button, um, get, get us on social media, and we'd love to talk some more as well. Great. Our next question is, do you support Java and or Scala? Uh, we, we do support Java, so we have connectors for Java. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, you, you can, you can, you can do that. You can use it right away. Uh, Scala, we, we don't have connectors for Scala, but uh, I mean, if you if you want to use Toronto in Scala, you can you can run you can write us, and we will so probably we will uh, uh, make make a, a connector for Scala like in the in the near future. So so you know we we normally uh, look at. At what our our customers want from, from from us, and like with somebody wants connector to a new programming language that, that we uh, uh, that, that we haven't supported yet, then, then we will create a connector for. This. Okay, great. Um, also, I think you have a little bit of a kind of static on the line, Dennis. Sorry? Okay. Any any other questions? <laughs> A couple more. Yes. Our next question is: Is can can you repeat that question, please? Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Is Terran Tool available for Arc Linux? Available for sorry for for, for Arc what? Linux. What's what's that? Um, can you uh, can you spell it or write write this? Arc Linux. Um, it's I will put it in the chat window. Oh, go ahead. It's a type of distro for for Linux. Ah, Arc Linux, yeah, it's a it's a distro of Linux. Uh, it's a good question. Let me let me go to the website and check it out right away. So actually, Tarantula is available for for a lot of uh, distributives of of Linux. Um, just one second. Support download. Um, Binary package. Yeah, 
seems to run on Perl, which we do support. One second. We could just. Um, yeah, we actually. Um, I can. I can send the link. Like, if I can do this in the chat. Well, I just. Uh, it 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 doesn't work. So okay, so 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 we have uh, uh, we have packages for Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, uh, CentOS, Amazon, Linux, and and FreeBSD. So so we don't have packages for Arc Linux. But again, we can we can we can we can help you with that. So again, if you if if you write us, then we will 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 help you to to build a rental for Arc Linux. Okay. Other questions? Yep. Yeah. How much of a performance impact can Terran Tool make on top of a relational database? Well, oh, normally it's, it's 10x. So, like normally, it's it 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 makes it 10 10 10 times fast uh, 10 10 times faster. It can be like uh, 20 times to 30 times. So so it, so it depends. But but normally, I would say like 10 times. So, but, but right. So, it, I mean, if you're using, let's say, Postgres compared to MySQL, you may have slightly faster performance already. Um, it also depends on the complexity of what you're asking your database to do. Uh, but just kind of out of the box, by moving your data to Tarantool and making the call to Tarantool, you typically get at least 10x performance gain. Uh, with some optimization, or let's say you're using DB2 or Oracle, or your calls are more complex, uh, your your gains could be more significant uh, in terms of performance. Uh, we also talked about the, the problem of how, whether you're using cloud or on-prem, how many machines does it take to be able to support your application? How big is a cluster? So if you can run, you know, just on one regular Amazon EC2, uh, millions of, of transactions, it may be that, you know, just one or two Tarantul servers can massively shrink the, the amount of, of, of machines you need in, in your relational cl cluster as well. So there's like a hardware gain and there's a, a performance gain. And we should mention, um, you, you may be able to use our, our open source version of this, depending on, on what you're trying to do. So you would also be able to avoid um, any, any kind of costs, like let's say SQL Server or Oracle. Um, even if you were to get some support with Tarantool, um, you end up paying a whole lot less than, than you would either buying more machines for an open source system or buying you know, license support and some kind of premium hardware or something like that, depending on on your use case. But that's a really good question. We're, we're happy to help you test it. We also have speed tests on GitHub and you can see on our website in the learn section, we have, we have different sort of benchmarks and other kinds of performance information, uh, but it's significant even compared to Redis, Aerospike, and, and other kinds of solutions that that are designed for, for performance. Great. Our next question is, can we use Terran tool in classic ASP applications? Sure you can. So it 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 has connectors to it it has a connector to C sharp. And um, so actually we have a lot of users uh, from ASP or from C sharp, I mean, uh, we can even uh, introduce to, to you to you know to some of our customers who are already using Toronto from from Microsoft Stack, you know, from 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 ASP, from C sharp, uh, who run Toronto on, on Windows. So yeah, it's 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 absolutely doable. It's working. Great. Really good questions, guys. And you know what? We'd love to talk with you specifically. It's a little hard to go into all of the specifics, but um, we, we could definitely schedule kind of a quick 
a quick call or something like that and go into this specifically or kind of track down some resources that we're not able to go into a lot of depth. All right, do we have time for one or two last, last questions here? Any, any other questions from the yeah. audience? Sorry. Can Terran Tool work with enterprise databases like Microsoft SQL Server, IBM DB2, and Oracle? It can. So we can integrate with any relational database. Uh, we have out-of-the-box integrations with Oracle, SAP, SQL Server, DB2, MySQL, Postgres, Memcached, Redis, and, and others. Um, a, a lot of people have kind of legacy systems as well that may not be kind of common. Uh, we, we can definitely deal with any kind of mainframe technologies or, or things like that as well if it's not sort of a, a common, common database. Um, the, the connector is, is pretty simple. Um, basically what we need to do is identify within your database what kinds of tables or, or data is relevant for Tarantool to access, and then we add in a little hook or trigger. So we can either push this table to Tarantool or have it go the other way. So for example, every time Tarantool stores a new authentication or a new session, um, it, it can now push this also back in, into that system as well. So for example, let's say you wanted to do a billing system from let's say SQL Server, you could move the different customer tables that are necessary, store that in, in Tarantool. Um, we'll, we'll put as much of it in cache or, or in memory as possible for speed. And then once those transactions are completed, it can then be offloaded uh, back to let's say SQL Server. So instead of the load being real time, the calls being real time, um, Tarantool can handle the volume and then put that data back into your system of record more slowly and evenly to avoid you know, a, a lot of load. But yes, absolutely, we would expect you know, that, that um, we, we, we would do that. Uh, so for example, in the stories that you saw, Vimplecom, this was an Oracle system. Um, the, the MasterCard system wa was an Oracle system. We have a number of, of DB2 and SQL Server customers. And, and a lot of people, are probably the most common database is MySQL um, and, and also Postgres on the open source. And so these are free. This is part of our community addition as well. Um, if you have an enterprise database, there's a very small cost for the enterprise connector. And, and that would be the only piece that, that we would need to add so you can interface with, with that system or, or any system. So if you have four or five different data systems in your company, uh, Tarantool can interface with, with all of them. And we're happy to, to help you do that if, if you don't see that connector kind of in our public repos. Great, and I think that's all the time we have today. And with that, I'd like to thank Dennis, Evan, and Tyler for a great presentation today. I'd also like to thank today's sponsor, Tarantool, for providing the D-Zone audience with a great webinar presentation. And lastly, thank you to everyone who joined us for today's presentation. We hope you learned something new today that will help you in your developer career. Have a great day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you all very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.